All right, before I start this video, I want to make sure that I really get this point across that there is a chance for people to win this bike and nine of the total of the X series bikes. So they're giving away three X20s, three X24s, and three X26 models. And you need to go to the link below, ebikeproducts.com slash X24. For the first 10 days that this video is out, you can be taken straight to the page where you can sign up to win. Uh, there's going to be 100 prizes given, 9 of them are bikes, and 91 are accessories and other stuff that's going to be given away. There's no purchase necessary. You will need to give your email address because that's how they contact you if you win. But because this is an X-Series flagship launch of the X24, this bike is absolutely awesome. It actually does have a top speed of 33 miles per hour is what I got. They claim only 31, so this is one of the few times the e-bike company is actually understating the performance. I want to talk about this video really quickly. This is a flagship launch for the X24. That This is a long video. I had this bike for about a month. Thank you very much, Engway, for trusting me to go ahead and do a review and sending me out one of these bikes. The X24 link below, it is an affiliate link. I may get commissions. If you do use that link while you go ahead and use it, thank you. It supports the channel. I do know it's going to be under $2,000. I don't know the exact price because it's not on the website yet. It's going to be an under $2,000 bike for the performance that comes out of it. And one thing I forgot to mention that it is foldable to fit in like an SUV. So these are the, one of the few full-size fat tire bikes that you can put into like a CRV, you know, HRV, RAV4, or one of those smaller, uh, the smaller SUV type cars. I mean, ability to have to have a full-size bike that you can take off in some off-road trails and not have 20-inch tires. There's going to be two ride segments that you're going to see in this video is because the first ride segment, when you see us in the back roads, all on the dirt roads and those type of things, and just with the music background, just having fun. We had it in normal mode the whole time. I didn't know there was a sport mode. And then I figured that out later, so I took the bike back out. I did a first-person point of view. You have a ride footage. I'm on the bike, and um, you're going to see the speedometer on it. That's the overlay. All speeds that you see on this video are actually of the bike that we're riding. Um, it's not the camera bike, it is the actual X24 because there is a GPS meter that is transmitting to the camera. I don't know why yet, I'm gonna find out more about it, but the sport mode does last only for certain periods of time. And um, we could live it for like five, six minutes at a time and then when you stop, it actually will sh cut back down. So you'll hear me saying, I made a turnaround and all of a sudden I'm going from 33 miles an hour down to 26, 27, not knowing why not knowing why until I looked at the screen and saw that hey it's only on a sport, uh, normal mode again I have to turn off the bike turn it back on and then got back up to sport mode now in normal mode I still get 26 27 miles an hour all the time so that kind of performs like any normal class 3 bike in sport mode it takes it to the off-road level where it's not even a class 3 it's considered only off-road use so that could be one of the reasons why I don't know exactly it could be also because when you're running at that high uh, wattages that it could be a safety feature that just make sure that the bike doesn't actually overheat or burn out the motor. We'll find out more information. I'll have more information in the description below when I do find that out. But in the meantime, ebikeproducts.com slash x24 takes you a chance to win um, up to I think nine bikes that they're giving away there, three of each of the models that you'll see of the X series. This is their flagship X bike and it deserves to be so. If you're looking for a bike, uh, one that has high performance that would be good for either outdoor cruising, folding, you can compact it enough to fold it because if that's an issue, if you want to take this bike around or you just want to go ahead and do use it as a commuter. I mean, it can do so much because of the range that you get, the comfort that it has, the feel that it has, great bike. Thank you so much again, Engway, and let's get started on the review. In this video, we're gonna be reviewing the X24 by Engway. This is a 24 inch triple suspension, dual battery, off-road beast. What a blast, let's get started. Putting together the Engway X24 was a lot easier than I thought it would be uh, when it comes to Engway bikes. They don't ship all of their parts as assembled as some of the other e-bikes I've gotten in the past and that is because they want to make sure that things don't get bent during shipping. So you do have to put things on yourself. What you're seeing me do here is put flat out tire sealant in the front and the rear tires. This is one of the first things I always do with any bike I get to make sure I don't get any flats on the trails. Now once I have the sealant put in there and I know that my tires are ready to go, I then start to unwrap the bike a little more, put the front tire onto the fork, and then put the kickstand on to make sure that I can stabilize the bike if I take it off the stand. At that point, I'm ready to go ahead and put the handlebars onto the handlebar assembly, and then unwrap it some more, make sure all of my adjustments are made. And in the meantime, I'm also testing some of the electricals by putting the headlight on, making sure that turns on, the taillight's working fine, 
and then I'm also checking both batteries to make sure that's working the way that I'm expecting it to work. Now, what you're going to see me here is I will actually finish this assembly on day two. At this point, I have the batteries both charged up, putting the seat attached to the center post battery. Then I'm going to go ahead and put on the back seat pad that goes into the rack as well as the pedals. And that will get me ready to go and I was ready to ride. Okay, here we have the Engway X24. This is their flagship X-Series bike. Now they have an X26 that was out here. This is by far the um, beast of the X-Series. One of their best performing bikes from according to what I heard. It is also really, really fast. So we're gonna see some footage of it going up to about 33 miles an hour. And it's riding on 24 inch fat tire tires that you have here these are four inch fat tire bike uh, tires and at 24 inches they're not as big as the 26ers because this bike is already big as it is it's already like 92 pounds so having tires that are 24 inches you know a lot of times you won't be able to tell between 24 and 26 unless you're doing the standover issue so this bike is actually better suited for uh, performance riders that actually are a little shorter like me i'm only 5'5 and even for me at 5'5 it's still a little on the larger side but yet rideable and look at the back here, it's triple suspension. We have air shocks in the back, okay? And in the middle, we have also this mechanical spring-loaded shock. So those are your, that's your first and second shock. And in the front of this bike here, well, let's take a look. Before we go to the front, I want to show you we have these Welgo pedals here. And the way that this bike is designed, we also have the kickstand that stays free so you don't get any pedal strike. As uh, you see here, it's, it's very well balanced. And the way it is and the frame design very unique i've not seen so many um i guess pivot points and i think maybe because of that spring loaded shock in the middle that you have that maybe for uh, i mean a backseat rider maybe to hold the load but as we look at take a look at the front of the bike here here we have our hydraulic shocks now i don't know the travel on this before it came out uh, it's not on the website so we don't see it we're also looking at the 180 millimeter hydraulic brakes and that's another thing that's really cool about this bike. They have a lot of premium parts on it without a premium price. Again, in the fat the tires that we have in the front, this is again 24 by 4 inch fat tires. And uh, it does come with integrated headlight and tail light as well. Now, this middle shock here, I gotta say that I don't really feel it as much. Maybe I'm not heavy enough. At 170 pounds, I don't really have a lot of back shock knee necessary. Uh, as far as I want the road to be felt a little. So that works out really fine. Uh, we have two batteries in this, and I'll go over that a little later. That center frame part of it is a folding fat tire bike, even at its size. So you do have the ability to fold it in half. So as we're looking again at the hydraulic shocks, I want to point out that we do have both your lockout and your preload adjustments at the top here. Uh, it's pretty basic. I mean, it does. It is a very high performance style feeling shock, but you know, most front shocks, hydraulics, they kind of feel the same here. But to have the adjustability, depending on your weight, you might want to go ahead and do that. They work really well, by the way. I gotta say that. Now, next to that little knob there, you do see our GPS tracker on that. So just keep that in mind. That's not something that's on the bike, but it does show the mileage or the speed on the overlay. 
that uh, right there shows exactly how fast that we're going. That's the actual bike. It's not the camera bike that you're seeing. It's this actual bike. But this uh, adjustments that you have available, again, makes it a lot more flexible for you to go ahead and ride. Now, it is midday, but I would like to show you that this headlight, it won't light up the whole road in front of you. Uh, it'll light up a little, but more so it's so that you can be visible by cars. So it does a great job at actually making sure that you're visible. You also do have a port here in the middle of the frame. There is a 10 amp hour battery in the middle here that can be charged up right on the bike itself. But like a lot of folding bikes, if you fold the bike out, you can also remove that battery and charge it separately. Uh, but it does have the ability to be charged right on the bike itself. Now what's something unique is that you have this battery right in the middle here. This is a huge battery in the middle that is the whole seat post and battery combined. And uh, there's also a connector. So when you put this, the battery in there, the, that cable wire connects to the battery to make sure that you can then get your power going into it. Now, the cool thing about this too is that if you don't have that plugged in, the battery that's in the middle of the bike actually still makes the power of the bike. So you can still get power. As you see here, there's still power to the bike and that's from the 10 amp battery that's in the middle. Now there's a 35% uh, charge only in that middle battery there. Uh, you might not be able to see that very clearly, but once this is plugged in, it starts to balance out the load and you'll be able to see that a little later as well because the seat post has the big battery in it. And that's one thing that's really, again, a big benefit of this bike all in all, that it has these two batteries, really huge, and together you can get up to some really crazy miles. They're saying, I think you can get up to like almost 80 miles or 54 miles to 149 miles. That's what you're gonna be getting. Now you also have paddle shifters here, so you can assist the bike with, uh, I think it's up to eight gears that will allow you to go through that. So you do have uh, a lot of ability to go ahead and help the bike when you want. Now here's the battery that's in the poster. It's a really heavy battery. And as you can see, it's really long and it goes right down the middle of the post in there. And as you can see here, let me go ahead and change it so you can see the view here. This battery is monstrous. It also is really heavy and it has a total of 19.2 amps. So almost 20 amps on there. It's a 44, 48 volt. Both batteries in the bike are 48 volts because they have to be balanced when you're running two of them. But at 19 amps there and 10 amps in the middle, you have a total of 29 amp hours in this bike, which allows you, like I said, at pedal assist one on eco mode, you can go up to 149 miles, which is quite far. And now at pure, at pedal assist five, on eco mode, you can go up to 54 miles uh, on this bike. That's, now, that's probably in ideal conditions, but um, that's still really good range that you're going to be able to get on this bike. And if you wanted to, you can ride only on the 10 amp if, and then just hook up the other one later on if you want more. But as I'm putting this battery back in and hooking it up, it's a, just a, a pretty interesting design, I got to say. I mean, it was kind of shocking on how it is. So here, once you put the battery in, you do have the ability to lock the battery so that nobody can get it. So that takes one key in itself. And even in the middle, so here's that key. It's a barrel key that you'll stick in there. It'll pop up that center pin and that will allow the latch to come up. Now, I do find that I like to actually tighten this a little longer because it is a seat post as well. I don't want it sliding down as we do it. So like there you see the pin is brought up and that allows the latch to come out. Now what's interesting also is that there is an Allen key type screw on the back side of the latch so that you can tighten it and loosen that. Uh, so I'm not sure, but it might be possible that someone could loosen the Allen key side all the way if they're carrying one with them. Uh, I, I haven't tried that yet, but that's something I might take a look into. So here again, putting that latch back in there and you'll see like the pinhole can then be just put in so that it keeps it from being able to come out. That's when you need the key to go ahead and do that. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a proprietary battery as well. So here you can see on the back side of this latch, there is a... a kind of like a screw, I guess, that uses an Allen key that you can put in there. And so you can make it extra tight as well when you're moving the battery. So even if you have the battery at an open point, in order for someone to pull it out there, I do carry an Allen key so that it's it's extra tight. Uh, so that I would have to loosen that. Now, it doesn't need to be that way. I did ride it around where I could just open it, pull out the battery, put it back in and tighten it up. But if you're going off-roading and you're kind of having a little weight on it, I didn't want to make sure that it would not... Um, slide down at all. So here you can see I'm going to uh, screw back in this 
battery and right above that where I'm screwing is the port to go ahead and charge that battery as well. There's a little plug that's above that, that screw in that I'm doing. So it uses one charger, it can charge both batteries. And that's, um, I don't know, maybe they should have put two because if you're actually charging them separately, but that's just the way it is. Uh, you can either just charge the seat battery and then uh, it'll actually then balance out the load between the two. So here's where you actually open up your center frame. You can fold the bike in half, like I said. That battery also has its own key. It's a separate key that's in there. And I do have some demonstrations of how I figured out to go ahead and open up this battery. So here you see the battery that's in the middle. Again, 48 volts and uh, it has a 10 amp hour, so 480 watts hours in this battery itself. It's a pretty small battery, honestly. And it's because it's in the frame and there's only so much size that you have there. That sticker you see there with the Engway X24, I put that on there just so that I don't mix up any of my batteries when I have them in storage because I don't like to store them in the bikes as uh, it just is better for me to go ahead and keep them in temperature controlled areas inside the house. So there's that pinhole or that pin that actually comes down to lock the battery in place. And again, it's not a very big battery. Very easy to manage uh, to put it in and out there. So what you're seeing here is 35%. So now we have a better clear picture of that. And that is because the center battery is in place, but the seat post battery is not plugged in and ready to go. I mean, it is plugged in, but it's not turned on to actually support power. So there is a button here that needs to be pressed. And I didn't know that this button was there. So at first I was only running on the center battery and, um, I was kind of wondering why the battery seemed to be draining so fast. And then once I remembered about that, I uh, punched the, the, the button on the battery. And as you notice, it's charging it up now. We started at 35% and it's now at 39 and 40%. So it's like every five or six seconds, it goes up 1%. And it starts to slow down as it gets on a higher level. But it will reach 100% full max charge for us to ride because that seat battery had not been charged uh, or had been fully charged and had not been running. And uh, when I came out to do this part of the demonstration, I made sure that it was charged up. So we're seeing it actually charge up that middle and balance out the load. So we'll have a lot longer range now on here. Now, the other thing I want to point out is if you see on the pedal assist there, I'm going through the little settings. There is a normal in that blue segment there right below the number five on the PAS. And that's another thing you will notice that when I'm riding around the max speed that I got in the, uh, the demonstration part of it uh, is only 26 or 27 miles an hour because in normal mode at PS5, that's all you're gonna get. But I didn't realize there was a sport mode. So there's a segment in this video that you're gonna be seeing me actually run in sport mode to see how fast it goes. So even here at normal mode, you're seeing a 30 mile an hour top speed max. But I just wanna do a quick rundown of how I found that was the easiest way to go ahead and put in or out the battery. So what basically I found out is that if you move the back tire to be stable against something then it's very easy to put the battery in and out now other than that if you don't have something like that it's kind of um, cumbersome or very uh, awkward to make the battery go inside so what you're seeing here is once I got the back tire against the wall there then all I had to do was push against the wall open up the frame and then easily hold the front brake so the tire doesn't move there and as you can see it can just slide in the battery lock it up and then you can just then latch it back up and then you're done and the same thing goes for when you're actually taking out the battery same thing just reverse the process put the bike against the wall then open up the frame and you can unlock the battery and pull it out there that is one of the tips i really have for this bike because if you are going to take the battery in and out it'll save you a ton of time trying to figure out how to do it uh, the easiest way without you know falling over or dropping out the bike or the battery Okay, so now I have the bike in sport mode and we are about to get going. And this is kind of an incline on the way up. This is the first part of a trail that we have here. I'm on pedal assist five, which is the max. And uh, full throttle right now, up to 20 miles an hour already. And you know, when I did it in the garage, it went up to like 38, 22, 23, full throttle. Again, this is a slight incline. Batteries are fully charged. 25, 28 miles an hour, 29, and still, this is a little bit of an incline. All right, so we're getting a good 29 miles. Speedometer on the bike says 31 already. GPS says 30. I don't know exactly what, uh, 31. I did hit 31 on the phone GPS. The other one says 32 on the bike speedometer. 33 on the GPS. Okay, we're gonna go under an underpass, so I'm gonna lose some GPS signal. 
but it's just still a little bit of an incline. Kind of gives you a good idea that this bike is definitely one of the most fa the fastest bikes I think I have now. All right, so now we have now it cleared it out, and I'm actually already at almost uh, yeah. I'm, I'm air pedaling completely, so I'm not putting any pressure on the pedals whatsoever. Maintaining 30 miles an hour. And this is a little bit still of an incline. So 30 miles an hour, definitely we can get up to 31, 32. I saw that for sure. Uh, we will see on the overlay what this camera actually gave us as well. So let's go and turn around. We're gonna have a little bit of a downhill now. Oh man, I really wish I had this on sport mode the first time we were doing some footage. Cause uh, it would have given the uh, camera bike a run for its money for sure. Just again, throttle again. In fact, let me just go ahead and pedal slowly. Again, this is a, PAS 5, a little bit of a decline now because we're going back the other way. 24 miles an hour pretty easily. I'm already hitting air pedal. So the gearing actually 27 and I'm still pedaling a little bit, but right now back to air pedaling. In fact, let me just do throttle only. 28, we're gonna go under the underpass again so you probably won't be able to get much out of this. We're gonna lose our satellite signal. So the bike says 29 miles an hour. All right, a lot of wind, actually a ton of wind. So I'm actually in a headwind right now. If I tuck a little, I'm probably gonna get a little better. So I'm not real sure why, but it seems, oh, it switched down to e normal mode, that's weird. So I don't know if maybe sport mode only lasts a little while. That's kind of interesting. I had a 30 mile an hour max speed. Okay, so I'm back into eco mode now. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know what's going on. I mean, uh, the bike goes into normal mode and then I can't get back into uh, sport mode again. But you know what? We're gonna go to a definite flat location and then we'll go ahead and see if we can do a, uh, a full sport mode run. This is actually good because there was nobody on the trail. It's a little too hot today. Like it's like mid 90s right now. Okay, this is where we normally do our long run. Okay, I'm gonna shut off the bike and then turn it back on and see if we can get a new sport mode again. Yeah, let's, we'll see what we got on our speed run. All right, nine, 12, 16, 18, 19, 20. All right, we're jumping up speed really quick here, 20. Now this part of the trail is a little bit of a decline. Uh, there's a lot of headwind though. 27, 29. I think air pedaling actually gives it a little more of a boost. 29 still. Watch around these bins here. People might be coming up on me. 31, 30, okay, so we did it at 31 mile an hour. We're maintaining 30 now. I love how stable this bike is. That's really cool. All right, so we're going back up on our speed again. This is semi-flat, but again, we're gonna go into a down incline and then probably lose a little GPS signal and then we'll need the bridge again. But already at 30 miles an hour. Alright, so we're coming across our flat stretch in a moment. We got sport mode again, and here we go. Oh, go up to pedal fist five, and then we go. It gets to 20 miles an hour real quick. Okay, this is like our flat position right here, all the way down, a lot less wind. 29, 31. Another thing, we're probably gonna hit 30, 32. We are hitting 32. Speedometer on the bike says 33, actually. 33 even on the GPS. So it is going 33 miles an hour. 
So we are getting absolutely a high top speed of 33 miles an hour on this bike. That sport mode does actually do it a lot of justice. Okay, so out of my all my arsenal of bikes, this definitely is the fastest. And uh, the X24 is their flagship X series bike. At 24 inch tires with 33 miles an hour top speed is what I was grabbing on the GPS here. So definitely nice mileage on that. And come back around here. Very nimble as well. And you did see some of the footage we had. We were riding back here on the trails. That was pretty awesome. We're gonna stay in sport mode because it's still there. And let's go. So this is just only, again, throttle only. And we should have a clear run because nobody's in front of me. All right, so we have a clear run. I'm going exactly the same way on the same route. A lot more wind on me this time. And it dropped down to normal. I don't, that's so strange. That is why we did not have it. Okay, so we're gonna turn off the bike again and then let's turn it back on. I wonder if it actually hits a certain temperature. It actually stops. Okay, so we're again, throttle only. Oh, let's go put it up to five. And three, two, one, go. Yeah, not a lot of torque on the front end getting up there. It's already at nine, oh, 19, 20. I'm 21, 22. The, the GPS and the actual bike miles per hour is about the same. And they're very close. Yeah, 24, it jumped to 24 at the same time. So I'd say it's really accurate there. 25, 27. We're running out of runway here. All right, so let's see what happens. Pedal assist five. Okay, I'm already hitting air pedal at 26 miles an hour, 27. Again, still air pedaling, really, 28, 30, 32. Now a little bit of an incline. I can still feel it pulling, so I'm gonna say we're probably still gonna get more speed out of this. You can hear it starting to pick up speed again. All right, about that 27 mark, I'm starting to air pedal again. 28, let the throttle kick over. 29, actually maybe throttle is faster. That's interesting. And this is sort of an incline, and we are actually hitting 29 miles an hour, 30 miles an hour going uphill. I should switch it over to see wattage. All right, 1,400 watts. So I am seeing it pull, actually. It's 1,400, 1,358 watts and 28 miles an hour, 1,350. Still pulling, I'm st it's still picking up speed, 31. 30 miles an hour. Oh, man, it cut down to, all right, so it dropped down to normal mode. So there must be something regarding and the motor actually getting hot and slowing it down because now I'm down to only a thousand watts power max. Very interesting. So that's good. I mean, if you don't want it to burn out your motor, just don't expect to you know, maintain 33 miles an hour forever. That's, I think, one of the main things you're going to have to just consider with this. This has been a fun ride. Something I haven't really done with a bike like this before, but really interesting because uh, this speed run, definitely one of the fastest bikes I've ever ridden um, with throttle only. I mean, our camera bike can do 31, 32. This definitely would overtake it. And that's really rare. Hey, thanks so much for staying all the way to the end of this video. Don't forget, go to ebikeproducts.com slash x24 so you can apply to win one of nine bikes that they're giving away in this X launch. This is a really big deal for them. They're also giving up to a total of 100 prizes. Nine of them are bikes. And you're gonna like, the, if you get one of those, you're gonna like any one of those three. This X24 was an amazing bike. I hope you liked it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this bike. I mean, I really did like this. Gave a lot of performance. It got me excited. I haven't done a review with this kind of performance in a while. And this is just something that kind of blew me away. I'd love to hear your comments. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.